Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I want to talk about the potentially crazy changes that are happening to Battlefield 4. Right now on the CTE, DICE is currently in the process of testing a wide array of new adjustments to mainly vehicle combat and air combat. Uh, the biggest one that people are talking about right now is that the Stinger missile now does approximately 55 damage uh, per rocket against enemy aircrafts. Uh, if our math is right, which is pretty easy, that means that it only takes two Stinger missiles to land against an enemy enemy vehicle for you to get secure that kill. That is a huge upgrade from what we have right now. Uh, to DICE's credit, they have nerfed other aspects of the Stinger. It's going to take you slightly longer to lock on to an enemy vehicle, and it's also not going to travel as fast to the aircraft. So this way, if you have flares, you'll be able to react and activate them so it doesn't slam right into your hole. Uh, but even still, if you are working with a teammate, uh, getting two Stinger missiles to land into an enemy aircraft is not hard. Like, that's not a difficult task at all. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this is going to change the way that vehicle combat works. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second because there's even more changes that I think are, are, are worthy to talk about before we go into more detail. Uh, one thing that I know a lot of helicopter pilots will rejoice about, though, is that they have reintroduced Below Radar from Battlefield 3. Uh, Below Radar was a really cool mechanic back in the day. Basically, the way it worked is that if you you were flying about 25 meters or below in, an, in a helicopter, so you were r really hugging the ground there. Uh, other missiles, lock-on missiles, couldn't lock on to you. This was a really great way for you to escape the spam of lock-on missiles. It was a really cool dynamic. The thing is, though, is that if you did take advantage of below radar, it left you vulnerable to everyone down on the ground. If a tank was driving on by, easy pickings for them. If there was an RPG in the wing, someone was playing as the engineer, and you were flying low, you were a much easier target. And so it was this really cool trade-off system. Strengths and weaknesses. Who would have thought? If you wanted to avoid getting locked on, then you were vulnerable to everything who was using more of the dumb fire. If you didn't want to get shot out of the sky with the dumb fire rockets, then you were going to be vulnerable to people who were using the lock-on missiles. It was a very cool mechanic. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh hey, this is the counter to the upgrade of the Stinger missile. Yeah, it sucks that the Stinger got the buff being able to take you out with just two rockets, but if you're able to counter that by going below radar, this seems like a fair trade-off. The sad thing is, at least according to my testing, what other people have reported, is that the Stinger missiles are not affected by below radar whatsoever. The only thing that's really going to have a big impact here is that if you are fighting against enemy helicopters or jets and they're trying to lock onto you with their heat seeking, that's the only thing that's really going to be affected by this. Stingers and Iglas, even if you're 10 feet below, if you're 10 feet above the ground, uh, they're still going to be able to lock on you and fling that thing down range. And so when I first learned about below radar, I was really excited because because I love the way that it worked back in Battlefield 3, but sadly, I don't know if it's going to have that much impact on a gameplay. I don't really think it's really going to influence things much, because Stinger missiles are going to be an absolute nightmare. Uh, another interesting change that they made on the CTE is that the SRA has seen, let us say, some pretty big adjustments. Uh, basically what they've done is that it now does less damage to all vehicles. It doesn't matter if it's a tank on the ground or a helicopter up in the sky, you're now going to do less damage. But to compensate for that, it now has more maneuverability. It's much more agile. The movement feels a lot more reminiscent of what it was two patches ago when the SRA was amazing and in its prime. So if you were someone who uh, was used to the SRA back then, this is going to feel more comfortable. You're going to be able to whip this thing around, you're going to be able to hit enemy aircrafts a lot easier with it, uh, but the twist on it, and what has a lot of people upset, is that the SRA now can no longer one-shot uh, an enemy helicopter from 100% to zero. If you're going against, I think, uh, every vehicle up in the air except for the transport helicopter, it's now going to take two SRAs. Uh, the transport helicopter now takes three. I know that's absurd, I know it's ridiculous, but I think the transport helicopter now takes three SRAs to drop it from 100% to zero. And so I don't know how I feel about this, because on the one hand, it's great that it's more maneuverable. This will allow you to potentially just hit more aircrafts. This will allow you to be able to take them down. But if the trade-off is, is that it doesn't blow them up, even though it requires still a fair amount of skill. I don't care what anyone says. Hitting a helicopter, even two patches ago, when the SRA was in its prime, was not easy. Hitting a scout helicopter pilot that knew what they were doing was not impossible. You, you needed to be on your game, and they needed to make a mistake if you actually wanted to take them out with the SRA. And so, while it's nice that you're now going to be able to hit them more frequently, 
the, the trade-off that you don't get that one-shot fireball uh, is a little upsetting for some people. And so I, I kind of want to get your guys' take on this. And really, at the very end, I'm going to ask you, what do you guys think about all these changes? Because there's so much to wrap your head around. Because on the one hand, it's nice that you're going to be able to hit helicopters more frequently. But on the other, this just seems like it's going to allow the helicopter pilot to get the hell out of there. I cannot tell you how many times I've hit a transport helicopter in normal Battlefield 4 right now because it does take two straws to drop them. Uh, and it looks like I got them to fall out of the sky. But at the last second, the helicopter pilot is confident enough in his ability. He pulls out of that death spiral and he's good to go. And so, yeah, I stopped them for a few seconds. They weren't able to get to the objective as quickly. But because someone was repairing the entire time, they're good to go five seconds later. It's like that wasn't really all that effective for me to waste a straw on that aircraft. And so if that is the same way that it's going to perform for every air vehicle now, that just kind of seems like a, a slap in the face. Or not every air vehicle. I haven't tested against uh, jets. I should mention that. I think it. I think jets may still be a one-shot, but for helicopters, the real target there, uh, it just doesn't seem like the straw is, is going to be nearly as effective because while, yes, you're going to be able to hit them, maybe a little bit more frequently. It's still going to be really difficult. I don't know if that's going to be enough to justify the reduced damage. And so what it looks like DICE is doing here is that they want to force people into using the appropriate gadget for the right situation. Yes, you can get lucky with an RPG or a straw to take out a helicopter, but they want to incentivize you, really incentivize you, to using the Stingers and the Yiglas for that type of combat situation. And that makes sense from a balance situation. It's really really hard to balance out a skillful weapon like a straw for one-shot kills on enemy aircrafts. Like, that's very difficult to balance. And so I understand why they're doing it. I, I just don't know how I feel about it. You know, because at the end of the day, the, the game needs to be fun. And 55 damage on enemy aircrafts seems like overkill for the Stinger missile. The scenario that I see is that if two people are working in tandem, I should mention, this is this is nice, is that aircrafts, uh, the cooldown on their countermeasure has been reduced. And so you're going to be able to pop those more frequently. You're going to be able to pop your flares more often. But even still, as soon as that flare is popped, the Stinger missile, if two people have you in lockdown, uh, they're going to take you out in like five seconds. Like there's nothing that you can do about it. You pop your flares. If you're out in the open for any longer than that, two more Stinger missiles are going to fly directly into your helicopter and you're you're gonna turn into a fireball like that just seems uh, too good. Maybe you guys will disagree with me. Maybe you guys think this is exactly where Battlefield should be heading because it clearly defines the role of what you should be using in certain combat situations. And I understand that. Like, I, I, I like that DICE is trying to balance it out and, and clearly define the roles of the different, the, the different rockets, but I just don't know if this is pushing things too far or not. And so I'd like to get your guys' take on this because there's a lot of room for discussion. There's a lot to talk about here. And so do you like that the straw has been changed? The stingers have been buffed? Do you think it's a good thing for Battlefield? Do you think it's a bad thing? Uh, let me know down below. And don't just leave a sentence. Like, give me, give me your complete thoughts. Give me the reasons why you think it's bad, why it's a good thing, and go into detail down below. Like, I am really curious to know what you guys think about this. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's little update. I hope you enjoyed. I didn't cover everything that has been adjusted on the CTE because that would have been like a 30 to 40 minute video. Like, like I said, there is a lot that has been changed right now. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this little update. I thought this is one of the biggest and uh, most severe changes that are happening. So I thought that that would be fun to have a little discussion on that. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.